situation we want to improve. I will go over how it all started over here, what we have done so far, how it's going, and where we want to go. 2016 was indeed a very interesting and significant year. We saw the UK RSV conference, after which some of the participants decided to uh, launch a German RSE chapter. We had several national workshops on uh, research software next to research data. In uh, 2016, we also had the first call for proposals by the uh, national research funding organizations to uh, well, show off best practice examples for sustainable infrastructure and for the first time improve existing software and not only write new software. This was much needed, and this call was oversigned by, I think, a factor of 15. And then we saw a second call later in 2019. In the same year, 2016, the Alliance of the German Research Organizations, whose names you can uh, see over here, decided to uh, fund, found a working group on research software and later published guidelines for research software and digital services. And then two years later, we were able to uh, well, form our own society. Uh, the guy on the right in the brown shirt decided to have even another chapter for the digital humanities because they thought that would be necessary. And what else? We had a developer day at my university. The uh, CIO uh, was convinced to well, have the RSEs of the university to come together and well, start talking. One year later, the uh, first German conference with international particip participation from, I think, six countries took place, 200 people, and it was a blast. More highlights were, for example, a workshop on software policies with some publications later on, more local chapters popping off and a growing community. And we const constantly strive for increased international collaboration because we think that is the way to go. We're currently, as you all know, involved in uh, the European uh, sustainability infrastructure. We uh, recently wrote, published a paper on the uh, German landscape on the use of software sustainability, which I will quote on later. Some of us, including myself, are involved in the Fairful Research Software Working Group, where we work on the definition of research software, how to apply the FAIR principles, and how to get it all adopted. This is all promising and looks good, but we still face a lot of challenges. For example, the lack of incentives. So especially in Germany, a researcher in a short fixed term contract has hardly any incentive to write sustainable software. There's hardly any motivation to maintain that software, even after it has been published, maybe by requirement from a journal. And the motivation to uh, gain the uh, knowledge or development skills to write sustainable software are also very low because these people often have to focus on their next job. We all know that the motivation to cite software is currently quite low, but we are happy to see the action speak up to. Another challenge is, of course, the recognition of software as the uh, so called first class citizen of scientific results. I was involved in evaluation of current research information systems for our organization, and none of the commercial providers had any mention of software or data in most cases. So we decided to go for our own information system, have it built. 
for us, and we included data publication software and some other obscure research results from our designers. The uh, collaboration among, even within organization and among organization, maybe even crossing borders is difficult. And we often see silos, so a local GitLab server is fine, but hard to collaborate on an uh, in international project. What we still see is the not invented here syndrome um, due to a mistrust of third party software, sometimes justified. We don't have software management plans very often. And unfortunately, the public funding organizations still think that they only need to uh, fund new software and do not really uh, care about reuse at the moment. That's the impression. We see some brain drain because the uh, challenges our research software engineers face are not really career friendly. We recently had a discussion in Germany where junior researchers, including RSEs, are seen as disposable resources as the market is believed to offer new stuff all the time. Unfortunately, the scientific contracts law in Germany requires organizations to let scientific staff go after six or 12 years unless they became a professor. We still lack human infrastructure like uh, Software Sustainability Institute. And we still have to lobby very hard for research software engineering in the uh, NFDI consortia application. More on that on this slide. There were two funding calls and the German RSEs got together and tried to get an application running, but were told that it's not really up to uh, them to apply because it was too cross domain the funding call. And so at the moment we only have research data infrastructure consortia on domain specific let's say knowledge areas. And we still lobby for, let's say software being injected or implemented as a topic of these working groups they have to uh, well, found and discuss. So let's see how this is going. We did envision some solutions, especially in the paper that I mentioned earlier which I will dive a bit deeper. We think that recognition could be tackled by implementing some selection criteria for software that should be sustained. So should we see funding and we think usage and impact might be first criteria to be considered for some selection process. The paper provides much more. And I, was, I just want to note that some of these criteria resemble questions you may see in a software management plan, which unfortunately is still optional in most funding calls. You think awareness could be tackled by training, provide more training, that means that maybe some curricula in the universities need to be adjusted so that everyone has touched software in their education. We think SMPs should be mandatory, carpentries should be utilized much more, and everyone should become more aware of the pitfalls that all the legalities pose. And awareness includes the uh, first International RSE Day next week. We think we uh, require adequate funding for maintenance infrastructure and training. Seed funding is still necessary, of course, but in Germany, we now have more than 20 
frameworks for image annotation and maybe not every one of them is worth it. The software that is sustained should meet the criteria and maybe then we will see some long-term positions which we uh, very much need. We think the data and computing centers should receive dedicated funding for their hardware and their services where the uh, research software is developed on, is tested, and of course, for training, how to use that. RSE education material, material and of course, software documentation should receive funding as well. And I think in the end, it all boils down to better infrastructure. As I mentioned before, international collaborative development tools and an authentication authorization infrastructure is needed. We already heard about the uh, international sustainability infrastructure. I think carpentries can be seen as infrastructure because they provide the training. And we also promote more international and domain specific platforms to uh, discover, publish, and archive your digital artifacts, especially software. And again, we very much need a legal help desk to uh, inform the uh, research project, the RSEs, about, let's say, funding conditions, licenses, liabilities, and so on. And with that, I want to close and thank you for your attention.